In 2020, the world has already lost athletes who left indelible marks on their sports. While their accomplishments will live forever, these sports heroes were still only human in the end. Here are the athletes we lost in 2020. Don Larson helped the New York Yankees reach four of their eight World Series in the 1950s, winning two. The journeyman pitcher also made brief stops with the St. Louis Browns, Baltimore Orioles, Kansas City Athletics, and San Francisco Giants, among others. His stats didn't pull him into Hall of Fame contention, but Don Larson will forever be a special part of baseball lore because he's the first, and so far only, pitcher to throw a perfect game in the World Series. In Game 5 of the 1956 World Series, Larson didn't give up any hits, walks, or allow any runners to reach base on errors. The Yankees went on to win it all in seven games, and Larson was named the most valuable player of the World Series. After playing his final big league game in 1967, Larson switched careers to paper goods sales before retiring to Idaho in the early 90s. Larson passed away from esophageal cancer on New Year's Day at the age of 90. Even before the Hulkamania of the 80s, wrestling was hugely popular in America, and there were few athletes as important to the sport as Rocky Johnson. Born Wade Bowles in Canada in the 1940s, Rocky Johnson was reportedly out on his own by the age of 14. He found solace and purpose with boxing and then wrestling. In the mid-1960s, he gained acclaim under the name Rocky Johnson, taken from boxing legends Rocky Marciano and Jack Johnson. He became a star in the National Wrestling Alliance, ending up as one of the most popular and recognizable wrestlers of his generation. Johnson joined the WWF in 1983. With Tony Atlas, he made up the Soul Patrol, the first African-American duo to win the organization's tag team championship belt. Johnson retired in 1991, but his influence remains prominent. He trained his son, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who inducted his father into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2008. Rocky Johnson died at his Florida home on January 15, 2020, at the age of 75. Every generation gets a basketball icon to call its own, a single player that makes a case for themselves as the greatest of all time. Wilt Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and for fans who followed the NBA in the early 2000s, Kobe Bryant. The achievements of the player who called himself the Black Mamba are staggering. Entering the league at just 18 years old, he played 20 seasons, all of them with the storied Los Angeles Lakers. In that time, he won five NBA titles, led the league in scoring twice, made it onto 18 All-Star teams and 15 All-NBA squads, was named the league MVP in 2008, and finished his career in third place on the all-time scoring list. As he wore two jersey numbers during his career, number 8 and number 24, the Lakers went ahead and retired both after Bryant wrapped up his career. Not one to leave quietly, the ultra-competitive Bryant scored an astonishing 60 points in his final game, which isn't even his best single-game performance. That would be the 81-point show he put up against the New York Knicks in 2006. On January 26, 2020, Bryant was traveling to his youth basketball complex in California when the helicopter crashed, killing all nine people on board, including the 41-year-old Bryant and his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna. Chris Dolman was a dominant defense dynamo, one of the NFL's strongest point preventers in the 1980s and 1990s. Drafted out of the University of Pittsburgh in 1985 with a fourth overall pick by the Minnesota Vikings, rival quarterbacks hated getting sacked by this defensive end and linebacker. In 1989, he led the NFL with 21 sacks, at the time the second-highest number in a single season. During stints with the Atlanta Falcons and the San Francisco 49ers, he led his squad in sacks, 9 for the Falcons in 1995 and 15 for the 49ers in 1998. His career total of 155.5 sacks placed him fifth on the all-time list. Man is just uh, extremely strong. He's a little bit of a freak of nature. Dolman's achievements didn't go unnoticed. He was voted to the Pro Bowl eight times and was a first-team All-Pro selection on two occasions. The member of the Vikings' Ring of Honor was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2012. According to the NFL, Dolman struggled for two years against glioblastoma, an especially aggressive form of brain cancer, undergoing tumor removal surgery in 2018. Sadly, Dolman lost the fight on January 28, 2020, at the age of 58. The Andrettis are the first family of IndyCar racing. Mario Andretti dominated competitors in the 60s, with son Michael following suit in the 80s. Mario's twin brother Aldo raced, and so did his son John Andretti. And in 1991, John Andretti did his family proud by capturing the first race of the IndyCar season. Then in 1994, he became the first racer to compete in the storied Indy 500 and NASCAR's Coca-Cola 600 on the same day. It's a test of endurance so difficult that it's only ever been attempted three times since. From the mid-90s on, Andretti concentrated on NASCAR, winning the 1997 Pepsi 400 and a 1999 contest at Martinsville Speedway. 
But always on Andretti, he never completely turned away from IndyCar, going on to race in five more Indy 500s. Andretti struggled long and mightily against illness, having received a stage 4 colon cancer diagnosis in April 2017. He subsequently launched an online campaign to persuade others to go get potentially life-saving colonoscopies. In March 2018, he disclosed that he was cancer-free, but just two months later, he reported that the cancer had returned and spread. He passed away on January 30, 2020, at the age of 56. Hailing from the French town of Le Sable de Lande, Poeti Norac was an athlete to watch, a rising star in the sport of professional surfing. After learning how to surf from her father in the shortboard style at the age of six, Norak turned professional while still a young teenager. In the French national championships, Norak finished in second place in 2018 and third in 2016. According to CNN, she'd recently moved to Australia to better pursue her sport in a more competitive venue. On February 7, 2020, the French Surfing Federation confirmed to media outlets that Norak had died on the Sunshine Coast of Australia the previous weekend. The cause of death for the surfer was not immediately disclosed. Norak was 24 years old. After a couple of American League East titles in the 1980s, the Toronto Blue Jays went to the next level in the early 90s, winning back-to-back -back World Series titles in 1992 and 1993. Infielder and hit machine Tony Fernandez was there for almost all of it, playing for the franchise from 1983 to 1990, rejoining in 1993, and eventually retiring from the game in 2001. Fernandez spent 12 of his 17 pro seasons in Toronto, and he was named an All-Star five times and was awarded a Gold Glove four times for his fielding prowess, primarily at shortstop. Offensively, Fernandez put up near Hall of Fame numbers, cracking more than 2,200 hits with a lifetime 288 batting average and nearly 250 stolen bases. He's still the Blue Jays' all-time leader in games played, hits, and triples. Fernandez struggled with kidney disease since 2017, and eventually he developed pneumonia and was put into an induced coma. On February 16, 2020, he was taken off of life support and passed away. Fernandez was 57. It's not an understatement to say that Mickey Wright dominated her sport the way Serena Williams or Tiger Woods have at the peak of their careers. In 1999, the Associated Press named Wright the female golfer of the century, and Golf Magazine called her the greatest of all time in 2009. After joining the LPGA in 1955, Wright won her first tournament the following season, and then her career exploded. Between 1958 and 1966, she won 13 majors. That's the most any woman would ever accumulate on the LPGA Tour. And every year from 1961 to 1964, Wright won at least 10 tournaments each season. Her 82 total wins is second only to the 88 by Kathy Withworth. Even before she went pro, Wright was a phenom, winning the 1952 USGA Girls Junior Championship and the World Amateur title in 1954. Lingering foot issues led to Wright's retirement from the Pro Tour in 1969, but she still played occasionally, winning one more tournament in 1973. Three years later, she was inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame. Wright suffered a fall in early 2020 and had been hospitalized for a few weeks, suffering a fatal heart attack on February 17th. The golf great was 85. In his 1955-1975 NHL career, hockey center Henri Richard did something that not even Wayne Gretzky, Gordie Howe, or Marc Messier could manage. Richard was part of 11 Stanley Cup winning teams, the most ever won by one player. That's because Richard spent his entire career with the Montreal Canadiens at a time of dynastic dominance of the NHL. Richard was a key part of the almost routine title winning formula. The captain of the team for half a decade, he was also one of the best setup guys in hockey history leading the league in assists twice and finishing his career with 688 of them. Richard was preceded in NHL success by his star brother Maurice Rocket Richard. Because he was 15 years younger and 3 inches shorter, Henri Richard earned the nickname the Pocket Rocket. Both Richard brothers were named to the NHL's list of its 100 greatest players in 2017 and both are members of the Hockey Hall of Fame. After a struggle with Alzheimer's disease, the Pocket Rocket passed away on March 6, 2020 at the age of 84. Chris Reed was born and raised in Michigan, which provided a cold enough climate to help him become a world-class competitor in his sport of choice, ice dancing. With his partner and sister, Kathy, Reed competed in and won ice dancing events around the U.S., including a national amateur title. Then, in 2006, the pair decided they wanted to compete for their mother's home nation of Japan. Successfully petitioning the Japanese Skating Federation, the Reeds came to dominate their sport in their adopted but ancestral home earning seven titles and competing in eight world championships. 
They competed in multiple ice dancing events in the 2010 Vancouver Olympics, the 2014 Sochi Games, and after Kathy retired, Chris Reed teamed up with former singles ice dancing champion Kana Miramoto for the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics, where unfortunately they didn't register high enough scores to medal. Reed joined his sister in retiring from active competition in 2019 and had plans to stay heavily involved in ice dancing as a coach and choreographer. Sadly, that didn't happen. On March 14, 2020, Reed died suddenly from a fatal heart issue. The former ice dancer was only 30 years old. The Harlem Globetrotters are probably the most famous basketball team in the world, despite having never played in the NBA. Instead, the team barnstorms the planet and has played in tens of thousands of exhibition games. Fans come to see a show as the team's ever-changing roster of players puts up effortless trick shots, stage humorous stunts, and otherwise engage in semi-scripted on-the-court shenanigans and banter. While many have suited up for the Harlem Globetrotters, the guy most synonymous and emblematic of the team is Fred Curly Neal, who played in more than 6,000 games in nearly 100 countries from 1963 to 1985, according to ESPN. While renowned for his showmanship, Neal really could play. In his senior year at Johnson C. Smith University in North Carolina, he averaged 23 points per game just before joining the Globetrotters. He's such an iconic player on such an iconic team that he's one of the few Globetrotters to have had his jersey number retired. Neal was also a Globetrotter during the team's pop cultural heyday of the 1970s, a time when he also starred on the Harlem Globetrotters Popcorn Machine TV show and in the TV movie The Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. Here's the million dollar question then. Yes. Ginger or Marianne? Both. Neil died at home outside of Houston. The basketball legend was 77.